Good morning and welcome. My name is Mitch Hancock. We're at New Sun Dairy today. We're here in Northern Utah. Today we're gonna to be taking tours of my dairy here in Corinne and several of my friends' dairies located in Northern Utah and Southern Idaho. We're gonna learn what life is like for a dairy cow on a dairy farm. We're gonna to start today with the baby calves. My name is Caleb Bateman. I am a fifth generation dairy farmer and welcome to my farm. Uh, the name of our farm is Bateman Cedar Farms. We are located on the west side of Utah Lake, or just about 20 miles south of Saratoga Springs. We're here at our dry pens. We dry all our cows off about 60, 70 days pre-calving, and we separate them into weeks. So all these cows here, they're going to calve within the next three weeks. As they get closer, we move them closer to our maternity barn so that they can be checked more frequently. We bring cows here on vacation to get them ready to calve so that they can have a peaceful birth and that nothing will go wrong, as least stress possible is what we're trying to do here. So where we're at now, we're inside our maternity barn. So the cows from the outside at this point, we bring them into these little sheds, we put them on their own, usually, and we let them calve by themselves. After they calve, we take the mom in, we're gonna milk her colostrum off. Okay, that's her first milking super high in protein, butter fat, everything. It's two, three times higher than normal milk. Calves are born with passive immunity. So in their stomach, they have these little microscopic holes and in the colostrum that that mother grew for that calf, she's passing her immunity to the calf. So by giving that calf the colostrum that's tailored to it, it's gonna have 30% better immunity from day one. We calve 30 calves a day so if you could imagine a, a pen with 30 mamas and 30 babies moving around, it would be extremely difficult to keep tabs on each of them. We separate for pure safety because cows are extremely clumsy. I love them, but they're clumsy animals. And we don't want babies getting stepped on. And we also want to be able to focus on each baby individually and make sure that they're sucking, they're getting enough colostrum, they're standing. We want to make sure they're healthy. So we separate for health on both ends, mama and baby. So we're here at our calf hutches. So from the maternity barn, the calves are gonna stay there 24, 30 hours. They have to pass a bill of health before they leave. Once they come here, we separate them out into each their own little individual house. We do this to prevent spread of sickness. Um, cows, they touch a lot of things with their nose. They smell, they're licking each other. They're always touching something or someone with their nose. So we separate them out they're gonna be in these individual houses with neighbors close enough that they're not totally socially awkward, but far enough away that they're not gonna spread sickness. Here we give them two, three quart bottles a day. We give them all the water they can drink and we give them grain starting at day three. So we use ear tags as an identification. All our cows have two. They have a bigger one that has a visual ID and then we have a little white button. That one is registered with the state of Utah. So the state of Utah knows that that cow was born on our farm and it's got a whole medical record that can follow it. I'm Trevor Weymut. I'm a fourth generation dairy farmer. Um, you're here on my dairy, Weymut Dairy, and this is our calf facility. We did a fabric barn so that the sunlight can come in so that we have good light all the time. We have lights and fans. We want to have a good visual of all the babies to make sure they're healthy. The first couple weeks of a calf's life is really important to keep them safe until they build an immune system. We house about 45 calves. As you can see, they're bedded with straw. It helps them stay warm in the wintertime, helps them stay cooler in the summertime. We like to keep them warm and dry. That's why we have this, this barn over their heads to keep them out of the weather, and out of the breeze, out of the elements. They're on milk for about a little over two months and then we'll put, wean them off of milk and they'll eat mainly grain mix and, and hay. And then in about two and a half months, they're moved into group housing. At six to eight weeks, our calves are moved from hutches and group pens like you just saw to larger group pens, such as this, where they're fed hay and grain. They'll stay in larger groups and in larger pens. As they get older, they'll move out to where they prepare to become milk cows. We're gonna take you and show you what that looks like. Hi, my name is Siska Reese and I work at Muraya Dairy here in Melba, Idaho. This is just about 25 miles southwest of Boise. 
This is our free stall barn. It has stalls for every cow to sleep and all the cows are free to roam around or eat or drink at their leisure. So cows are actually creatures of habit, leisure and comfort and they love a routine. We use compost for bedding because we recycle our manure through that and each cow has her bed or her area of beds that she likes to sleep in every day. If you'll notice in our freestyle barns, we actually have a cement wall that's four feet high. That is a strategic height for our cows because if you'll notice, it's just high enough to keep in the heat in the winter time and yet low enough that in the summertime when they really could use a breeze through the barns, it still lets that breeze come in and keep them cool in the summertime. In addition, we have our roofs angled because our freestyle barns are running from west to east and in the winter time, the sun is further south. So what that means is in the winter time, more sun will be on the cows for longer during the day. And in the summertime, it's almost 24 hours a day shaded. So they stay nice and cool. So actually, no matter what time of the year it is, if you walk into the center of the freestyle barn, it's much more comfortable than it is out here, outside of the walls and outside of the roof. My name is Russ Kohler. I'm a fourth generation dairy farmer in Midway, Utah. We're here on Canyon View Farm, our, my family's farm that's been here since 1929. Um, behind me is our milk barn. Um, we've, we're relatively new in this barn. We've been here for about two and a half years, but it's a robotic milk barn, meaning we have robots to milk the cows 24 seven whenever the cow wants to, which is a little bit different than most traditional systems. When we were designing our barn, we knew we had to get something that was going to be completely comfortable for the cows. Everything that we want to do in dairy is designed around keeping those cows comfortable. So we opted for a barn with retractable sides that open up most of the year. Uh, as long as the weather's uh, working with us, we're keeping those sides up. So it feels like you're outdoors. The trick with cows is they don't mind the cold, but they don't like the heat. And so the nice thing about this barn is when it's opened up in the summertime, this overhang creates a nice uh, cool environment that's about 10 degrees cooler than the outside air temperature. And then in the wintertime, we go ahead and close the curtains down and we can seal the barn in and activate our ventilators. That allows the cows to stay a little bit warmer in here. We actually have a state-of-the-art ventilation system called an energy recovery ventilator that pulls the heat out of the exhaust air of the barn and preheats the ventilation air coming in. And that's going to uh, basically just temper it when it's really cold outside. But what that ultimately means is when it's 40 below outside, even with no supplemental heat or, or gas heat or anything like that in here, the cows are going to let off enough heat to maintain a 40 degree temperature in this barn. 40 degrees is completely comfortable and it allows all of our equipment and water troughs to work. My goal as the dairy farmer is to keep my cows as healthy as I possibly can. So we want to do anything we can to make sure that's always the case for them. One of the tools that we use, you can see these green and yellow collars around the necks of the cows. Uh, those are basically the equivalent of your Fitbit at home. They're tracking how much she walks around, how much she eats, how much she ruminates or chews her cud. All that information is sent back to my computer, so it allows me to get an individual snapshot of what's going on in a cow's health. For example, when a cow starts to become ill, usually the first thing that goes is their appetite, so they don't eat as much, just like you and I do. So what will happen is that caller will flag me and say, hey, you need to go look at this cow, and that allows me to get in and do a detailed physical find out what's going on and I can get her healing a lot faster. So I estimate that I can diagnose an illness maybe even three to four days faster than I ever could in the past just by using a little bit of technology. So on White Harvest Farms, we are considered a dry lot dairy facility, which means our cows are kept outside in corrals with windbreaks and shelters. In the winter, we straw down the cows so they have a warm, nice straw bed to lay on. And in the summer, we try to keep the corrals clean and flat so that way they are able to lay down in all different areas and that way they can cool down. On average, a dairy cow can drink 30 to 50 gallons of water a day. Each corral has a water trough in it that is pumped up from the well and that water is there for them all day, every day for them to be able to, to get to. Here at New Sun Dairy, we work with a nutritionist to make sure that our cows are fed a, a healthy diet full of proteins and vitamins in order for them to stay healthy while they milk. I'm going to introduce you to some of the components that we use here at New Sun Dairy. They may look a little different than what we eat, 
because the cows have four compartments to their stomach and they process food a little differently than we do. I'm also gonna have some of my friends introduce some of what they use to feed their cows. The cows are fed twice a day. The TMR mixture, which is a total mixed ration mixture, where we put in all the different feed varieties. And on average, a cow can eat probably 80 to 100 pounds of feed a day. This is a product that we feed our cows called corn silage. We take the entire corn stalk, we chop it into small pieces like this, and we put it under a piece of plastic. On our farm at New Sun Dairy, we have about two football fields worth of this covered in plastic where it cooks. The reason we cook the corn silage is so that the nutrition is available when the cows eat it and it works its way through the stomach of the cow. This is dry alfalfa hay on our dairy here at New Sun. We feed about 5,000 ton or about 8,000 bales of this hay every year. One of the unique things about a dairy cow is its ability to digest feeds that humans can't digest. And one of those unique feeds is cottonseed. You're all familiar with cotton. Many of our shirts are made out of cotton and has many uses. And after they pull the cotton off, what's left is this little seed. Inside this seed is protein and carbohydrates. The dairy cow uses this as one of its staples. It can turn this into milk and cheese. What you feed the cows is really, really important. And we having our own cheese plant, one of our byproducts of the cheese process is whey. It's a liquid, the liquid version of the milk that comes off of the cheese. Um, whey is a really unique uh, food item. It's almost solid protein. Um, it's very, very nutritious and it's actually used for people a lot. It's really commonly recognized in protein shakes that bodybuilders and athletes use all the time. It's the same type of protein. So instead of drying that out and selling it for human consumption, we actually like to use it for our cows. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring it over in liquid form, we're gonna mix it right into the ration. And so it absorbs into the hay and it increases drastically the amount of protein they're getting in their diet. So the grape hummus actually is a byproduct from the Welch's grapefruit plant and it's a great source of fiber and vitamin E. One of the handful of byproducts that we use on our farm is mill run. Uh, mill run is an important part of our ration that we feed to our cows. And essentially what mill run is, is it's the middling of the wheat, it's the chaff, it's all the dust that is a byproduct of milling wheat to make bread. They basically sweep it up and put it into a truck. For cows, we use it as a feed supplement. It's high in protein, high in fiber. It's a good source of phosphorus. Right now I'm standing in front of a byproduct that we use. Um, it's called soybean meal. And it is after they've taken and scrunched the soybean for the oil to extract the oil out of it. It's the part of the soybean that they don't need for um, the oil and that humans really can't consume. One of the byproducts that we use on our dairy is called beet pulp. It comes from when they, they harvest sugar beets they take the sugar from those beets that me and you will use, that they'll use to make food for us. The leftover is the, is the pulp. My cows can take advantage of that pulp. It's a great fiber source, a protein source. Um, we feed our cows about three and a half pounds of that a day. Here we have a wheat byproduct that we use from making cereal. We feed a, a pound and a half of this wheat every day. We're very proud as farmers to be able to utilize the byproducts that otherwise would go to a landfill. Uh, the byproducts that some of my friends have been able to show you today to make a nutritional product, milk, that you're able to consume. We're gonna take you now and show you how milk is processed. So this is our parlor. A parlor is a word that we use to describe the room that the cows are milked in. So our parlor is a parallel parlor. What that means is as you can see the cows walking in, they're turning perfectly sideways, standing parallel to each other. And the milkers will actually milk the cows from the back end in between the back two legs. A parallel parlor is what we found works best for our cows. We have jerseys. Jerseys are the brown cows and they are a little bit smaller and their milk is a little bit creamier than Holstein's, which are the black and white cows. Hi, my name is Bernie Tudorson. Uh, I am the owner of Barana Dairy with my family. So this is what's called a carousel milking parlor. As you can see, the cows are walking on individually by themselves. 
Each cow walks on about every eight and a half seconds and uh, spends about eight minutes on this carousel. We get through here about 400 cows per hour actually. So as they walk on, the gentleman that starts out there is sterilizing with an iodine solution. And as that goes by, the second gentleman here is inspecting each cow as it goes by and he actually takes a milk sample to make sure we have the proper milk quality. As it goes on further to the end over there, we attach the milking unit. So our robotic dairy has four different robots. Each robot can milk up to 60 cows. Right now we're milking 130, but the four robots allow us a capacity of about 240 cows when we get to our peak. Our plan as a dairy is to grow to that eventually, um, just over the next couple of years, but right now we're milking 130 on the four robots. Our robots actually are available for the cows to milk 24 seven whenever they feel like it. So literally I have cows walking in any time of day or night, walking into one of these stalls and the robot milker will activate and start the milking process. Uh, this tells us a little bit about what's going on. We've got cow number 190 in here. She's expected to give 20 pounds uh, and she's, she's already given a little bit more than that. But when they come into the robot, they get a uh, pellet, a treat. Um, it's coated in molasses. It's, it's kind of like candy for them, so it's a good incentive to bring them in. Um, but really what drives them in is the pressure that they build in their udder. It becomes uncomfortable, and they realize when they come into the robot that they get that pressure relieved and they're more relaxed. And so that's what brings them back to the robot. Uh, when they walk in, their collar that uh, is kind of like your Fitbit identifies who the cow is to the robot so it knows what to expect. It's gonna give her the correct amount of feed based on how much milk she's producing. This is where we literally individualize the nutrition of the cows is by giving them a specific amount of pellet that's specifically calculated just for them. Uh, this particular robot uses a 3D imaging camera that's gonna locate and attach all four cups. Once the cups are attached, it's called inliner cleaning. So it's gonna go ahead and rinse, wash, and sanitize everything inside of the cup liner. That provides a really nice clean environment to start the milking process. Once she's milked out, it's got a flow meter on each quarter. And once the, each quarter finishes, it's gonna pull off and it's gonna administer a post dip. So the post dip is gonna go on, it's an antibacterial. Now that we've opened those milk ducts, we wanna make sure they're protected from any harmful bacteria. So we're gonna put that post dip on there just to protect her. It's gonna release her and it's gonna open up and be ready for the next robot or the next cow to walk through the robot. Once the cows are milked, the milk enters these vats. During that process, the milk goes through something similar uh, as a radiator in a car where the milk is chilled from about 100 degrees Fahrenheit to 36 degrees Fahrenheit. Once chilled, we have a semi-truck come and pick the milk up, haul the milk to our processor. At that point in time, the milk is pasteurized and turned into cheese, yogurt, or other milk products that you would find in the store. Thank you for joining us as we've had the opportunity to visit several of my friends around Utah and Idaho in the dairy industry. Uh, you can see that we do things slightly different in how we manage our cows and how we manage our operations. Our goal is always the same. Our goal among all of us is to make sure we provide quality products in the dairy industry, that we take care of the environment and that we're good stewards of our animals and good stewards of our land.